Hey guys, today we'll be talking about the copy scale constraint in Blender. I'll be using the 3.0 version of Blender. The copy scale constraint is used to force its owner, so the object it's placed on, to have the same scale as another object known as the target. In this video we're going to discuss just some of the most important settings. So, step 1. Create a simple setup. To demonstrate how the copy scale constraint works, let's create a simple setup. This time, surprise, you can leave the default cube in place. We'll put the constraint on it. So, this is going to be the owner. We also need a target. Let's make it a simple edge. First, go to front view, select the default cube and hit shift D to duplicate it. Move the duplicate along the X axis. X. Good. Now go to edit mode, add select mode, and select just a single edge on the cube, like for example here. Hit Ctrl I. Now all the edges are selected except this one. And then hit X and select edges to delete all the selected edges. This will leave us with just one edge. You can see it over here. Let's select it to make it more visible. Okay. To keep things clear, let's move the geometry to the origin. To do that, go to the object menu and under the set origin, option select geometry to origin. This will do the job. Step 2. Add the copy scale constraint. Now we're ready to add the copy scale constraint. So select the cube and go to the Object Constraint tab and click on the Add Object Constraint drop-down to expand it and select Copy Scale Constraint. Copy Scale. Now you should see the constraint added in the Object Constraint tab. We already have the owner, which is the cube. Now we have to set the target. So the object that we will use to control the scale of the cube. You can use the picker tool to select the edge. So the picker tool and select the edge. It's named cube 001 because it was created out of the cube. And this is why the name of the edge is irrelevant, because we didn't change it, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that the edge is now the target. Step 3. Play with the axes. Now let's see how we can use the constraint. The first element I'd like to talk about are the axis toggle buttons. By default they are all on. Now select the edge, hit S to scale. As you drag your mouse cursor and thus scale the edge, the cube also scales on all three axes. Now you can also pick just one axis or a combination of two axes to use. So select the cube again and now make sure only the Z axis is selected. Select the edge again and scale it. Now the cube will be scaled only on the z-axis. Escape to cancel this operation. And now select the cube one more time and in the copy scale constraint setting select the x and y axis. X, y but not z and select the edge, hit S to scale, and now you can see that the cube is only scaled in the XY plane. Step 4. Make uniform. Now select the cube again and you can use the Make Uniform option over here 
to scale uniformly on all axes. It may have the same or different effect as when picking individual axes. It will have the same effect if all three axes are selected. So select the cube and then toggle all three axes on. Now select the edge and hit S3, Enter, to scale it by a factor of 3. Watch how big the cube is. Now first hit Ctrl plus Z to undo the operation. Now select the cube again with all three axes still on and check the Make Uniform checkbox. Now select the edge and scale it by a factor of 3 again, S3, Enter. So the cube is now the same size as when the Make Uniform option was unchecked, but this behavior will change if only one or two axes are on. So, First, undo the operation by hitting Ctrl plus Z, select the cube, and make sure only the X axis is toggled on. Make also sure Make Uniform is checked. Now scale the edge by a factor of 3 again, as 3. Enter. Now the cube is much smaller because the scale is uniformly redistributed on all three axes. You can also try out a combination of two axes. Don't forget to undo the previous operation first. So, Ctrl Z to undo, select the cube, and now let's check, let's toggle on the X and Y axes. X and Y. Let's select the edge and hit S3. Enter. Now the cube is bigger than with just one axis toggled on, but smaller than with all three axes on. Under the operation, select the cube, toggle all three axes on, and uncheck the Make Uniform checkbox to get ready for the next step. Step 5. Power. By default, we copy the scale with the same factor, so if the edge in our example is scaled by a factor of 3, the cube is also scaled by a factor of 3. But you can change this. By setting the value of power to a value greater than or less than 1, over here, you can make the cube grow faster or more slowly. Actually, there are four interesting cases besides the one with power set to 1, which we've been using so far. 1. The value of power is greater than 1. 2. The value of power is less than 1, but more than 0. 3. The value of power is 0. 4. The value of power is less than 0. Let's check them out one by one. After each operation, make sure to undo it so that you can better see what's going on. To even better see the size of the cube, after each operation, hit N to open the sidebar. Good, and now let's leave power at 1 and check the size of the cube. It's 2 by 2 by 2. Now select the edge and hit S2, Enter, to scale it by a factor of 2. Then select the cube and check its new size. Now, as expected, it was also scaled by a factor of 2 on each axis, so the new size is 4 meters on each axis. Now undo the operation so that the size of the cube is 2 meters again, and now set the value of power to 2. This is the power to which the scaling factor should be raised, so if you now select the edge, and scale it by a factor of 2 as 2, Enter. The cube will be scaled by a factor of 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. So the new size will be 8 by 8 by 8. Now undo this operation 
and set power to 3. This way, by scaling the edge by a factor of 2, let's do it as 2, enter, we scale the cube by a factor of 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, reaching the size of 16 by 16 by 16. Now the edge is inside the cube because of how big it got. Undo the operation. And now let's see what happens if we set the power to a value between 0 and 1. Let's select the cube and let's set power to 0.5, for example. Select the edge and hit S2. Enter. The cube should now be scaled by a factor of 2 to the power of 0 0.5, which is the square root of 2, so about 1.41. So the new size of the cube on the h axis should now be about 2 times 1.41, which is about 2.82, 2.83. Okay, let's undo. Next, let's set power to 0. Let's select the edge, S2, Enter. So, if you scale the edge by a factor of 2, the cube will be scaled by a factor of 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. So, it won't be scaled at all. Undo the operation. And finally, let's set power to a negative value, let's say negative 2. Now, if you scale the edge by a factor of 2, as 2, Enter. The cube will be scaled by a factor of 2 to the power of negative 2, which is 1 quarter. So its size on each axis should now be 0 0.5. So you can use negative power values if you want to make the owner smaller when the target gets bigger. And there are some more settings which we are not going to cover in this video. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.